it's your girl Mish. Welcome to another episode of Love Mish, where I share my thoughts, opinions, and ramblings, and sometimes I'll have guests over, but no subject is off limits. It's a billion people in the world, and I'm one of them. So welcome to my world. Let the conversation begin. Hey, loves. Oh, my God. So once again, it's been a while. I haven't been hitting my 7, 17, 27. However, I do squeeze it in. I have so many plans, so much to do. And sometimes I get sidetracked, but I do make sure I take time out to do my podcast because it's a very, very, very important. Okay, so tonight's topic will be vegan life. So, I want to say I've been on this journey, this will be three years now, and it started because someone close to me passed away and um, of cancer, and I had no idea what cancer was, I didn't know the signs of it, you know, it's very taboo, you see the commercials about the children losing their hair on TV, that was about as much as I knew about it. But I tell you, you'll learn something when it hits close to home. Now, nothing made me research cancer or anything. But when a person passed away and you hear there's cures, you're like, what the heck? You didn't tell me if I would have known there was cures, it's a possibility this person could still be here. That kind of hurts. So I took it upon myself to try to better myself. What can I, I can't bring that person back, but what can I do to save me? Okay. Um, it cancer is basically in every fucking thing. It's ridiculous. So I have my master's degree, and I remember doing a case study with Pepsi or Coca Cola. I'm not gonna put it on either one because I'm not sure which one it was. But the case study was one of them was being sued because the chemicals in their product. I'm not gonna say it was the soda itself, but whatever chemical ingredient we all know, there's various ingredients that they put in this crap. So, one of the ingredients um, was very high in America. And check this out, y'all. Let's just say India or overseas, a country overseas. Their lab said, hell no. Like, these levels are too high. We're not feeding this to our people. So, they went to sue Coca-Cola Pepsi. And Coca-Cola Pepsi was trying to say, you know, based on the American guidelines, it's okay. So, number one, if you look around the world... Every other culture, their people are in shape. They love their fruits and vegetables. The hell, they even love the animals more. And then when you look at America, obese, you know, gimme, 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 fried, 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 whatever the case. Like, no one really cares. Um, so, I just wanted to point that out. So, continuing with the case study, um, my job as the one of the chief officers of the company and this this is what gets me in business they they give you these case studies and what your job is is to control fucking media to do whatever it takes to not lose people okay so let me continue one of the people put and this is the only reason why they did the investigation somebody had put on social media i'm not drinking pepsi or coca-cola anymore because there's a chemical that causes it and i'm not doing it that's how the investigation started so, um, India was like, they had bought all these shipments and they wanted to send them back. Like, no, that one post went viral and it was, they were about to stop that shipment. So the investigation began and they wanted to sue them for basically trying to poison our people. So my job is to hire a laboratory, test the product, revamp the product, apologize to the community. And let them know that we have changed our product. Let's continue business again. Do you see this fuckery? Okay, so that's my business class now. Um, so as I began to go on this journey, I didn't just say, okay, I'm vegan. I didn't know shit. First of all, I didn't even know what the word was. What the fuck is a vegan? This is how un- undereducated I was. So I want to start the podcast out with that. I did um, pull up some definitions so I wanted to go over those and then I'll continue with my story and my journey and where I am today so vegan a person who does not eat or use animal products I'm a strict vegan 
um, using or containing no animal products, a vegan diet. So that's um, just basic Google dictionary. And then I also had a web, a web link. I'm gonna pull that one up. So you know I love my Urban Dictionary. So people who refrain from eating any animal products or anything derived from animal products are using animal products such as leather, silk, or wool. It is a more strict form of veget vegetarianism. People who are vegan are often passionate about their veganism. Um, the American Diabetic Association continues to assert that a vegan diet is a healthy diet. Vegan, someone who slaughters and kills fruits and vegetables. Now, nah, sometimes you gotta laugh because people are just so fucking funny. Now, I will say this. I don't think we're supposed to prematurely pick these fruits and vegetables. I don't think we should be growing them in a lab year round. I th And I don't think we should be eating seedless fruits or vegetables. For Pete's sake, everything reproduces. And if my fruit don't have a seed or my vegetable doesn't have a seed, what the fuck is it? So, I will say when the fruit or vegetable falls, it's time to eat. If we literally have to pick it, that could possibly be killing it. So I kind of agree with that, even though they were trying to be funny. Um, because fruit and vegetable actually give their life to us. That is that's a beautiful love that, that God has set that up. His whole purpose is to give nutrients and food to animals, humans, hell it even go back it even decompose and go back into the ground so that's you know wow okay so continuing with urban dictionary vegan veganism is a diet that abstains from any animal products meat or byproducts examples egg milk wool leather etc most people will assume that because you follow a vegan lifestyle you must be in a cult this is not always the case although you do have your exceptions that give the you know rest of us a bad name now, I had to stop doing that, like, shaming someone else. We all are on our own journey. God has given us choice. It's the most wonderful thing in the world. That means no matter if something is good or bad, you ultimately make every single choice in your life. But with, with, with choice comes great responsibility. So if you are eating burgers and grease, this, that, the other, then don't be crying later when the doctor has diagnosed you with diabetes. And now you have to take insulin or lose your leg and different stuff like that. It's like we, we get on our knees and we're like, oh, Lord, help me. But you don't look at the whole life that got you there. Like, I'm glad I'm not God or creator because I'll be like, case dismissed. Like, you literally did this to yourself. We have computers in our hands, people. A freaking instant answer in our hands. And if you don't believe one thing, search again. If you don't believe that, search again. But damn it, if a million things is coming back giving you the same answer, I think shit might be true. I'm just saying. That's just me. That's just fucking me. That's just me. And why are these animals running around here healthy, eating fruits and vegetables, and they don't have diabetes? You know who have diabetes and all this shit, cats and dogs? You want to know why? Because they're in our fucking care, and we're feeding them processed canned food with the same chemicals because it's sitting on the shelf just like ours, and wondering why these animals have these diseases. Natural things, they don't have freaking diseases. Diseases, to me, are man-made. Because we eating this man-made shit, this chemical shit, unpure, unoriginal, fake shit is in your body. Your body don't know what the fuck to do with it. Like, what is this? We're not used to this. How are we supposed to fight this? It's out of order. It's out of nature. It's out of law. But anyways, I'm going to continue. Being vegan doesn't mean that you have to be part of PETA, which I do like PETA. Um, but I'm such unboxable. I try to keep my name out of a lot of stuff because it boxes me in so instead of saying i'm vegan i'm gonna start to say i'm vegan-ish because well let me tell you how i started i stopped eating red meat so it was just fish and that's called pescatarian and then i stopped eating fish and i was down to vegetarian so i'm still doing my cheese milk eggs and then i stopped doing cheese milk eggs and also sugar believe it or not guys and now I'm down to bread. Now, when I say vegan-ish, I, I still go to the club and get a fruity drink. And what is that full of? Liquor and sugar. So those aren't good for us. But I don't do this every night. And we're about to have a potluck this week at work. And we're ordering sandwiches. And guess what I'm going to do with my sandwich? I'm going to take the meat off and the cheese off. And I'm going to eat the lettuce, pickles, tomatoes. 
and mustard. So I'm not 100% what they define. I don't know what my clothes and shoes are made of and all like that. Like, I'm definitely working there. But I think when you tackle a big issue a piece at a time, you can you can fight it. If you try to jump on it all at once, I think it's harder. It's a harder pill to swallow. So I've been doing pretty good. Um, and, and as I continue to go down this path, they're making a lot of stuff. Like, they have meatless taco. They have meatless chicken. Um... You know, like, if you go to Publix, it used to be a little section. Now we have a whole little aisle, and um, I haven't been to Whole Foods yet. I'm so scared. Everybody say it's so expensive. But I'm a little leery, too, because if I'm not eating real meat, I'm eating fake stuff. This could be twice as bad as the meat itself, because what the fuck is it? Now, some of it is tofu, and you have to be careful with tofu because there's good tofu and bad tofu. But I think it boils down to if I'm not growing this shit on my own, they could be lying and putting a label on there and get my get more money from me because it's more expensive. So the joke is probably really on me. But all in all, I don't want to harm animals. I don't want to harm something for my benefit when we waste so much of it. I actually saw a slaughterhouse video and it disgusted me. And every time I think of it, ugh, so that's why I will not eat it ever again. Like, it, it got to me that bad. Um, the fish are the same way. I didn't even know we slaughtered sharks. It was a whole beach full of sharks that they were slaughtering. And whales. And I don't know. Humans just disgust me. I almost think, like, am I really human? Because a lot of stuff disgusts me. I just cannot be like, because I want a burger. A whole cow died. Because I want a burger. And it probably was a baby. They don't even live long, you guys. Probably was a fucking baby. So that whole thing is demonic to me. Satanic, ritualistic. I don't want no parts of it. I know in the Bible they ate meat. But guess what, honey? They had traditions where they would honor that animal. They would bless that animal. They would kill it in the most sacrificial way. Just like in the um, Indian culture. They would honor that stuff. You know, you say a prayer and, and have the soul guided somewhere. You know what I mean? Just in a respectful way. Now you should see the pigs that work at those slaughterhouse. They have these little electrocution things. They'll stick it. They'll kick it. They'll push it. It's just like evil people work there. That's energy too, you guys. You're not just eating food. That's energy. That animal smell the blood. Okay, so can you imagine the people in the Holocaust... When the first people went in the gas chamber, they heard them screaming da da da, and they in line. You think no, no, the fuck is going on? I'm next, damn it! I, they don't took all my clothes. There's no way I can hide my face to try to survive. When I go in this fucking shit, I'm dying. That's the same way them animals feel. They 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 hear the cries of the people of the cows and animals, and you know ahead of them, they smell death. They smell the blood, and they know they're next. I kid you guys not. I'm gonna tell you what videos I watch this, that, and the other. But I had a dream that I was a freaking cow. And I was in line for the slaughterhouse. And they they have them walk in these lines where they can't turn around. They're made of steel. So it's literally like one way. And the cow in front of me died. And I was next. And it was nothing I could do. And I know it was a dream because it was more of like a burning furnace. And I know they put them in a machine and kind of flip them over and slice their neck. But the point was, it was nothing I could do. And I just feel where you fight, 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 and you just stop because, like, fuck it, there's nothing I can do, and I freaking died. That was, like, the worst feeling in the world. Like, I've never been attacked or beat up or anything like that. But that, but I felt fighting, fighting, fighting to no avail. Like, it, like nobody was there to rescue me. Nobody was there to plead my cry. Fuck a prayer. You know what I mean? Like, just death. This is it. And I feel horrible. And I remember in um, growing up, I never really like touched chicken or clean it. You can ask my family members. So it was already like there in me. Um, but it just took a little bit more growth and understanding that I to get me where I am today. But I remember watching those slaughterhouse videos on YouTube, you guys, and just like crying. Like, I can't believe we're doing this. And nobody, you know, let's say for the Jews, it took a while. Army came and rescued them. Slaves, it took a while. You know, the war broke out. We was free. 
who is fighting for the animals? It's a lot of activists out there. And it's probably going to take a while before we turn a new leaf. But damn, somebody always need to fight for somebody. You know, it's always a weaker vessel. I remember even being in school. I hate it. Like, I had glasses and needed braces and stuff like that. So, I was already the underdog. But I hate it how people would pick on someone and belittle someone. Like, why? Especially when it comes to shoes and hairstyles. Do you know I don't have a job, my nigga? My parents is, you know, dressing me and fixing me up. So, it is what it is. And I just thought it was petty, like, a lot of the time. Like, why do we care what that person wears? Am I giving you money and buying you clothes? No. So, what what can I say about it? It is what it is. But anyway, I digress. In school, I remember reading a book called The Farm. It was farm animals that revolted against the farmers. Like, they literally kicked the farmers out. The horse didn't want to, you know, plow the land anymore. I remember a, ki- a, a pig, a chicken. And I'm going to go back and read it, which is really, really interesting and it was true them animals don't be wanting to do the stuff that we forced them to do and don't get me started on the zoo is that not how they would parade slaves in the circus oh look at this african-american yada 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 people i and i and the more i learn i cry y'all they used to throw pins at a child for the child to fall and the alligator for the alligator to eat it that was a fucking game. They would also put uh, feed African American babies to alligators. Google this shit. I kid you not. I I'm 31 years old and I just found this out. That disgusts me. What what we do for entertainment, for self, for pleasure, for food, nutrition? It doesn't matter what you do it for. What are you doing? We need to really check what we're doing. Just because it's for nutrition, you deem that it was okay to kill a, ch- a cow? Because you're hungry and you can eat fruits, vegetables, a whole bunch of other shit, but you would rather kill a cow because it sits on your stomach heavier? Now, I will say that I eat and eat and eat and eat, eat About the heaviest thing on my stomach is potatoes and noodles. Everything else is motherfucking in and out. I'm ready for another plate. I will say that. But that's just how the body is made. We can't even digest all that stuff. That's why a lot of people got big bellies. That's not natural and that's not normal. You have crap in your intestines. Do you know how long an intestines is? You have crap in your intestines for weeks, if not months. And that's disgusting. I saw a video where there were maggots in somebody's intestines. Y'all, worms. This is just disgusting. So we literally are employing these hospitals and doctors and stuff. They're really laughing at us. And I haven't seen so many fat doctors. There's some out there, but they should be shamed. Because you're doing all these surgeries, this, that, the other, and you ain't changed your life. Now, I will say one of my classmates became a nurse. And I remember she was doing surgery, like surgery tech, or she was basically in the room doing surgery. And she became vegan after that. I remember her saying, I'm vegan after that. And I said to myself, I wonder what she saw to go vegan because i never had heard her say anything about the vegan life she her mama done converted you know what i mean and she found a beautiful husband and i don't know if the whole family is doing the vegan thing but she didn't stop her you know just because she has a, a part life partner now and i just was like wow but let me get back to this because i got way off uh being vegan doesn't mean you have to be a part of an organization such as PETA or chain or chain yourself up to protest which i do my mom said she would never uh, bail me out of jail but i bet if it was something like this she would because i really feel bad for them i saw one video on youtube love you i love youtube youtube is clutch they were freeing ferrets i guess they get ferrets hair and it was a, a big barn full of them with rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of pages. A ferret's caged up, y'all. And it was just open them. Clack, 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 clack. Running down the aisles, open them. And it's, and it's, I love it because they all have on these black hats to cover that. You know, all you can see is their eyes. Um, they might have on black shirts. And they'll be like, we're going to go in there. Like somebody's recording and da, 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 da. Like they get jail time, y'all, and fine and stuff. Which... Oh, like maybe the company's losing money but so fucking what it's not like they're killing them they're freeing them 
I don't I don't know. My mind can't wrap around it. Maybe because the company's losing money. I wonder why they just won't sue them instead of give them jail time. I don't know. Freeing animals from being murdered is against the law. Do that even make sense? Do that even fucking make sense? I'm done. Because that's going to make me mad. Um, so you don't have to chain yourself up. I do. I do. I, um, the last thing I'm going to do is join an organization. Um, I think you could be a part of something like PETA and then you could actually do something. I'm in the do stage of my life. Whatever I love, I want to do. I just want to talk about veganism. I'm actually doing it. I'm living it for myself. Choosing a vegan diet for a purpose of animal rights purposes doesn't matter as long as you're doing it because you want to. If you do it correctly, you do not get sick and you do not need supplements in order to be healthy. And people are like, oh, you need to take vitamin in You have to take fucking vitamins too, so please don't throw that up in my face. If anything, I need less vitamins than you because you putting a lot of shit and toxins in your body that them vitamins is helping you fight and I don't need them for that purpose. So all my vitamins is going straight to me. Your vitamins going to help clear up some more toxic shit you putting in. But I told you about my, my three-year journey. This is year three for me. I wanted to go over um, some movies. So What the Health was a really, really good one. That's what really got me started. Um, Cowspiracy is a really good one. Forks Over Knives is good. Uh be educated is good vegan is good um eat sick and nearly dead is good food ink is a good one um before the flood that was my favorite one that one doesn't just talk about veganism that talks about the whole freaking world forks over knives was good um there's even one on youtube it's called like vegan 2017 i think they even have vegan 2018 um let me type it in real quick yeah vegan 2017 it's even a vegan 2018 and they're probably gonna keep doing that every year but those videos were really informative for me um Surprisingly, a lot of doctors were even adm- admitting how um, Big Pharma is in cahoots with all of these government programs back in this stuff that's really harmful for us. For example, my mother has a daycare. They tell her the kids need fruits, vegetables, a cup of milk, orange juice, whatever. They give her a planner of what these kids should be eating. Why is milk on there? Do you know vitamin D is a sign? Yes, you can get vitamin D in various places such as milk, but why would I tell you to go to a secondary source, which, which, okay, let me ask a question. When did you stop sucking your mama titty? I think you could go up to age five, but a lot of us was a couple of months. In fact, my sister-in-law stopped and I think my nephew is like four months now. She, so she went a while. My godmom, she, she did one of her kids up to five. So you don't see, and, and let's just be honest, if your wife pregnant, you probably got some of her titty milk, but you're not desperately getting glasses of milk, okay? This is for kids. Animals in the animal kingdom, do you see grown-ass, adult-ass animals still sucking tits? No. So, so, we, so we can say, bottom line, milk is just for the young to help them get good and strong. Why are you still drinking it as an adult? It makes no sense. Okay, that's one. Two, if that cow, baby cow, needs the mother's milk and you're drinking it, what is that baby cow getting? So you're selfish as fuck. And let's think about this. In the slave days, pregnant mama slave was feeding master son and what the fuck was her baby eating? This is why I keep comparing the two. Because they're so fucking similar. And I don't like one and I damn sure don't like the other. It's not right. I don't care how you try to slice it. Um, so milk is a no-go. Sit your ass in the sun. They say it causes cancer. Too much of anything is bad. Yes, we know. But sit your ass in the sun, get you some vitamin D, and leave the fucking milk alone. Every time I would drink milk, the only time I would drink milk growing up was for cereal. Almond milk tastes just as good. And I'm finna stop fucking with them. Because one of them done recalled the milk, talking about it was real milk. How you fuck up and give us real milk and not almond milk? And I never figured out what was what. So you can make your own almond milk 
or coconut milk or cashew milk or oat milk or hemp milk it's so much out there now the milk industry is plummeting y'all can google that too they're losing big money and now they want to give us healthy shit you know what i say fuck you it's a little too late you wasn't caring about me then and you don't care about me now your numbers are dropping and you're trying to keep up with the keep up you don't care about me and my health which is fine because i am my number one responsibility i have to take care of me and worry about me and i should not ever put that in anyone else's hands so i go back to having this computer in my hand and making sure i research every fucking thing and being accountable for myself because it's easy to shift the blame on someone else but but at the end of the day it's really your responsibility so back to that case study, yeah, you want to sue the company for giving your people chemicals, but at the end of the day, it's up to you to know what's in that product. And if that company fuck up, all you got is one time with me, fucked up one time, I'm done with you. You don't care about my health. So back to my mom, telling her to give these kids juice, milk, this, that, the other, when they don't need it. The only reason they do that is to back the milk industry. So now you got the food, lunch, free lunch, whatever, food assistance program, pushing milk to how many kids we have in the world you know and daycares and school system and stuff which is helping the milk industry so they're in cahoots with each other that doesn't mean it's true and let me get on to true stuff a lot of that meat that you guys are eating do you know they get rid of the cow from head to toe all those animals they don't waste a goddamn thing do you know jello is the skeletal system and like muscles and stuff ground up Ugh. and i used to love me some jello they don't waste anything you know what hot dogs are you may want to google it and i used to love me so every day after school hot dogs or oodle noodles before dinner because they took too long to cook every day i would get two hot dogs for my greedy behind hot dog is <laughs> lord Hot dog is everything grind up and put into a skin, silk, even sausage, um, so that you can eat it. I don't care if it's pork, chicken, this, that, the other, ugh. The point is, all the shit is grind up and put into a skin so they can sell it. These industries don't care about us. They get paid on the front end and the back end. On the front end, you a kid. Oh, um, let me. And why are we even feeding our baby powder milk? Can we talk about that? Why? What is made of that powder milk? Have you ever turned it over and read the ingredients? Do you know you can puree fruits and vegetables, and you can feed your baby, and your baby will be healthy, healthy and fine. So my best friend's brothers. So my best friend's niece, I was about to give you the long way. My best friend's niece, she used to drink porridge. I remember hearing her puree that stuff. She wasn't drinking no milk, but guess what? She was from the islands. So people with, with different cultures, they know. It's us, Americanized as fuck, that don't know. And we literally work and give them the money right back. Right back. And health is the most important of them all. Health is the most important of them all. You want to make sure that you're going to be around for a long time. Your kids need you. Your grandkids need you. And maybe your great grands. But you want ribs so bad. It's like, fuck them. I'm going to eat my ribs. And when I was on my journey, people would laugh at me. Especially when I first started. <laughs> but slowly but surely. Oh, I don't eat that no more. Oh, they don't want to claim the name, which I'm fine. But they're changing, and it just makes me so happy. And I'm not as healthy as I could be. I need to get some type of aerobic or gym or yoga. And that's the only thing that I haven't incorporated yet. But I walk home from the... I walk to work and from work. Like a, maybe a five-minute walk across the bridge every day. So I'm getting something in at least. But I start to see more and more of my people walking. I always see them, and I'm, it's not a racist thing, but they know about their health. Even when I went to the gym, I had signed up for a gym a long time ago. It was rows and rows and rows of treadmills, and guess who running? I mean, nonstop, from the time I go in to the time I leave, and I'm dog tired, and they running even faster. 
You know it's good to exercise to get the blood flowing. Do you know when blood flows, oxygen gets to all your body parts? Do you know when you're sick, it's because your cells don't have enough oxygen? So that's one thing. You ain't getting enough oxygen because you're sitting on your ass all day. And then two, you, you're you pumping yourself up with chemicals. And then three, you go to the doctor. Whoa, is me. The doctor pump you up with medicines, getting a check for every prescription he writes. And you're, 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 you're getting faster and faster to the grave. Little do you know it. And they get a check from that too. Now your wife is left here. Your kids is left here. Everybody crying. Lord, hope you had some type of life insurance. But it's like, when are we going to get educated? And I was so mad, like, my grandma, my mama. And I said, you know what? No, me. Grandma did what she did with what she knew. Parents did what they did with what they knew. It's me. I know. So guess what? And I was so mad, y'all. I was like, why I have to learn this stuff? Da, 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 da. Like, everybody keeps saying leader, teacher. I don't want it. But it keeps coming to me. Yet I'm just always going to be the fire starter to start things and to share things. And, I, and I'm just coming to accept that. But I want somebody to tell me and help me too. And I realize they are. These videos that I'm watching, they're sharing and they're helping me. These YouTubes that I'm watching, they're sharing and they're helping me. And guess what? As I learn, my friends are learning, my family is learning, my sisters, my parents, my grandma. So it's getting all the generations that I need to get to in reverse. <laughs> but it just hurts. Like we, I just feel like my race is so far behind with everything. Good Lord. When are we going to finally be on the same playing field? I'm just sick of it. But we have got to take care of our health, you guys. Please. You don't have to be veganism. You don't have to claim any name on anything, even if that's outside of food. Be your own self. However, research. You you are you are your number one defense. One of my lovers just tell me that all the time. You're your number one defense. But number two, we have this big-ass computer in our hand. And we should be learning something new every fucking day. But no, they got us in front of the TV. They got us hooked to drama. They got us hooked to nonsense. And it's nothing wrong with going out and have a good time. I love me a good vacation. I love me a good night out on the dance floor with some drinks. But my mind is starting to change. I could be at the club and I could be finding stuff to sell in my business um, shop. Like, my mind is just changing. Like, I'm trying to generate six sources of income so that I can clock out for the last time. If I, and the goal is to either stay 10 years to pay off my student loans or to get these businesses up and running where I can quit, where I can pay off my student loans, quit, where I can pay off my student loans, pay off my mortgage, because I'm claiming that, amen, I say. And just live. Like, why can't we just live, make money to live? Why do we have to make money to pay and pay and pay and pay? When is that going to end? I want to make money and just look at that account grow, grow, and fucking grow, and fucking grow, and fucking grow. So I can give back. I'm not a selfish person. So I can give back and generate more income and travel and different stuff like that. But to not be on that rat race. That rat wheel, round, 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 till I die. No, thank you. It definitely stops here. Y'all can have it. But hell, there's no way you could do any of that without taking care of this body. This is the same way you get in your car. You park at work and get out. That's how this body is. You are energy put into sperm, put into egg, put, uh, formed a body. And when this body decays, you'll be energy again. So take care of this body while you're in it. Nobody should have any disease. I don't care what it is. Food. Look at your food. My sister, um, my sister-in-law says she's going on a water cleanse. I've never done that before. I want to try it. There's juices. Um, even if you cut back, sometimes I've, I've been hearing like meatless Tuesdays and stuff like that. Just every day, just try to do better. It's not going to happen overnight. Just try to do better. You, 
you have a, a generation depending on you. And let me tell you how important DNA is. A lot of the stuff they say is hereditary. So if you do have diabetes, now you done passed it on to your kids and your kids' kids. But guess what? You can change that. They don't teach us that. DNA can be altered. It can be changed. So if you don't want to do it for you, do it for your kids. Do it for your grandkids. Some people need uh, excuse, a better excuse than themselves to do something. But you should be your number one excuse to do something. But, I, but I'm, I'm not here to judge. But I just want us all to do better. Like, people look at it as a taboo. And yeah, lasagna was good as fuck. Chicken was good as fuck. I used to go to Popeye's. I used to love getting the thigh, taking that top skin off, peeling off the chicken, rolling it in there, crunch, crunch. I know. But my cousin, guess what? My cousin took me to a vegan restaurant. Forgot the name. And the lady gave me a wrap. It was a mock chicken wrap. Do you know what it was? Fried mushroom. Chicken by itself is disgusting. You know what made it taste good? Flour and seasonings. Now, I'm not the best cook in the world, but my sister get in the kitchen and she make those same vegan dishes that I try to do and they taste so much better because she can season. It's not even about food, period. It's seasonings. It's all about the seasonings. And if you had that mock chicken route, you would have been like, I don't need chicken no more. It was so good. But we so used to going to these restaurants and we just want to eat what they cook. But they're changing. Do you know in Europe, Taco Bell has vegan. Um, Pizza Hut has vegan. Pie Pie. Like all their restaurants have vegan. And they're slowly, they give us a little bit of items over here. But over there, they have me- So look it up on YouTube. This one girl, all she do is muck bags. And I saw Pizza Hut. I said, what? And, you know, she buy all of the vegan dishes and eat them and tell you how they taste. I'm like, why they can't do this over here? Because they care about their body and their health. And if nobody care about our body and our health, we need to. Don't give that responsibility to your doctor. Don't give it to your fitness coach. Don't give it to your spouse or your kids or your pastor or God Lord help me how about you help yourself first and then see how the doctor can help then see how your spouse can help and kids then see how your pastor can help then see how God can help I bet things work a lot better that way and people tend to help you a lot more when they see you trying to help yourself and if you need to do surgery, by all means, go get the surgery. It's nothing wrong with that. If if a girl can go get a big butt and boobs, then surely you can drop some pounds. It's nothing wrong with that. And there's different methods to see what works for you. Because some people can't eat like they used to. Now, I don't think I can survive like that. I just love to eat. I could eat me a whole pasta vegan dish by myself. I would be devastated if all I can eat is a saucer. My friends and family know when I'm hungry, I'm mad. You mean I'm a little rest of my life skinny and mad because I'm hungry all the time? Uh, no. But if that's what you need to do, fine. But you can do it the old school way. But we, but this is the microwave generation that my mama say we want things fast. But please be careful because it, 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 because years later they finally tell you the downfalls of what they're doing. People were smoking cigarettes for how long before they put the Surgeon General on there? People was getting them butts for how long till K. Michelle, oh no, don't do it. People was getting boobs for how long till they tell you the silicone started dripping there. You got to get them redone every 10 years. So don't be jumping on these trains fast and, and they doing case studies on them right now. Case studies take years. Wait for them results to come out. Even me, I had LASIK surgery. It's a lot better now. But I'm pretty sure those first go rounds, I don't, I don't think every, you know, LASIK surgery was 100%. Sometimes you are the guinea pig because that's how scientists are, you know? But I just want to encourage somebody, even if you still eat meat, I'm not here to judge. That's perfectly fine. I've come to the conclusion that whoever I marry, if they're vegan, hallelujah. If they're not, that's fine. I don't want to buy the meat. They're going to have to buy it. Um... And I really want them to cook it, but if they want me to cook it, I don't mind. But as far as my kids, they're definitely going to be vegan until I say so. 
And I know if they go to my mama's house and different stuff like that, they probably gonna eat different stuff. But not on the count of me. And I don't want that on my hands. Not on my hands. I don't not I don't want that blood on my hands. I want them to kind of follow me until they decide they wanna do different. Now I do remember listening to a podcast and this one guy was um kosher. So he couldn't eat a lot of stuff and I think he said he was traveling. <laughs> God bless me. He said he was traveling in the airport and he, um, you know, because he didn't know who could see him or whatever. He got like a sandwich or burger or something, went to the bathroom and ate it. I don't want my kids to be like that. I just want them to know, like, this is a burger. This is what happened to the animal for me to get the burger. This is how much we waste food and we don't even save the food and give it to the homeless so the fucking animal just die. You know what I mean? I just want them to know. These are the diseases you could get. I just want them to know everything and then make that choice. I'm tired of making choices without knowing all of the answers. It's, it's, it's very fucked up how they have society. All these choices you make without really knowing. Like right now, it's not a good time to buy homes. A lot of people are getting homes. Do you know the market crashes? It's on a cycle. They don't predict this shit. They know because it happens all the fucking time. So I would say wait two years until you buy a home. And they're actually selling homes to people who can't afford it. So if you lose your job or if you get a cut or if one slight thing happens, you're upside down. That's wrong. I won't want to sell a house to someone like that. I don't care if you can't get it. If this is not going to be beneficial for you, however many years going forward, no. That blood is not going to be on my hands. Because guess what? When I sell that house and I get my commission set, I'm done. It's on you now. And that's wrong. That's between you and the bank. And it's really sad. Same thing with this food. Once you buy that um, food, the um, the slaughterhouse got their check. They don't sold the cow. They don't cut it up, slice it, ship it off. They got their check. And you got to deal with it for the rest of your life. You don't want to go to the doctor and get prescriptions, this, that, the other. I think, let me tell y'all. I've worked at Allstate. I've learned about cancer plans. I've learned about short-term, long-term disability, hospital. <sighs> all, all this stuff is kind of coming together now. I worked at Blue Cross and Blue Shield. I see how they do the bronze, gold, platinum plans. How um, certain hospitals do this or that. And I learned like in a classroom setting. I don't know why I learned from these jobs. But with all of that being said, it's like if no one went to the hospital, if everybody was healthy, the hospital would have to shut down. They would have to make up some reason to get us to come in there. Because let's be honest, you could be a doula. What did they do in the olden days? You birthed that baby by yourself. And not to keep going back to this, but that was the slave and the uh, slave owner. The midwife will come to the house and help you deliver that baby. So not to say that you need the hospital. They have made it a need. Oh, you need shots and this, that, the other. No, you don't. If something is wrong, then yes. But other than that, no, you don't. They just set up a system. I have cut back all my residual income. Um... I'm down to Netflix and Hulu, and those are about to cut off because I'm finally going to get the Fire Stick. Now, my friend did unlock my Xbox, so I got Cody on my Xbox, whoop, whoop, but that'll be in the living room. For my room, I'm going to get the Cody. Now, I do have Apple TV, but Apple is real funny. Once it's unlocked, you got to keep unlocking it. Who can do that every week? Like, whatever. Okay, Apple, you win. If somebody know how to unlock Apple, holler at me. But, um... I cut off Apple Music. There was like, and let me tell you about down. You've graduated. We've noticed you've graduated high school. Your plan is going to go from four ninety nine to nine ninety nine. It's not that it's nine ninety nine a month. How much is that a year? And what could I do with that? Uh, cut. Even parking at work, one hundred dollars a month for my car to sit here and people car still getting broke the fuck in. Uh, no. What could I do with that? That's a thousand two hundred. That could be a fucking car note payment right there. Uh, no. Let's walk across this bridge for five minutes twice a day. You're not getting my money. Um, what else I cut off? So I just basically cut off all the extra shit. And Hulu and Netflix is going to be next. 
Like, they just make us residual consumers. Like, no. I don't, even when I start my business, I don't even want to be a residual. I don't want to make my people residual consumers. I want to teach you what I know. Tell you where I got it from. And you can keep shopping with me or you can go with them. I'm not selfish. It's not about that. I think your gift will make room for you and money will come to you. Like, creator know you got to live. So, uh, hello, where's the money? You know what I mean? The energy you give out got to come back. So, if I'm giving out money, it got to come back. And I'm not going to restrict it in any shape, fashion, or form. It could be a bag on the street. It could be me working. It could be me selling. However it's going to come, come. But I'm just going to get off of this rat wheel. And it starts with health. Health is number one. I don't know. I be seeing people at my job, like, very, very old working. And I'm like, where are their kids? They should definitely be home and join their kids and their grandkids before the good Lord calls them home. But you here. You want to know why you here? Because you got medical bills. And you got to have, you, and, and uh, retirement ain't going to pay the medical bills. So that's why I say they get us on the front end and the back end. So now I'm forced to work all the way up to retirement because I can't afford a medical bill. Like, no, I'm, I want to be healthy to where I don't have to go to the hospital. I want to learn about herbs and remedies to heal myself and plants to where I don't have to go to the hospital. And this is funny. I only go to the hospital once a year for my annual, and I'm about to stop that. You know, I follow this one girl, and she sells pap smear kits. You can do your own freaking pap smear now, it's a lot that I have to research about that, you know. And I'm not just saying, fuck the doctors, do your own. Like, let's be honest. My pastor used to always say, God gave you doctors and he gave you yourself. You have to use both. Don't just give it all to the doctor. What do you know? How can you heal yourself? Okay, and then what can they help with? And then not even that. It don't even have to be a doctor, doctor. It could be a holistic doctor because they all about herbs and self-healing anyways. So maybe we're going to the wrong doctors. That's the biggest trick of them all. What happened to the medicine man? Because his granddaddy and grand, great granddaddy and great granddaddy passed down all the stuff. I just know it's total BS. And I always say Africa, 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 Africa. That's just, you know, what I see growing up. But in Africa, they have like the what? The medicine woman. I just saw an article where this lady remembers 400, 400 recipes to cures in her mind. And I clicked on the article to read to see if they was going to list them. Do you think they listed them? Hell no. They sure didn't. But the point is, that was passed down. She remembered, why aren't we doing that? So I'm at a point in my life, on my last podcast, I was talking about starting a me book, a grimoire, you know, something to pass down. I really do. I want to write. I, I want to spend my life researching and learning and sharing. I'm nothing. I am a sharer. The Lord really put that in me. I don't learn something to keep it to myself. Oh, my precious, this is just for me. I've never been selfish like that. I will share. I cannot wait to win the lottery so y'all can see how I share this money. This is not that serious. People be the richest person, lonely as hell, commit suicide. Because it's not supposed to be for you. My grandma always say, keep your hand open because the Lord can only bless you with an open hand. So that means money comes in, money goes out. It still got to go that way. I just don't want it to be for this damn corporate America. I want it to go other places instead of one place. But hopefully this encourages somebody. This is your life. You definitely have choice. You could do whatever you want to do. But we say we love ourselves all the time. All the time. But do you really love yourself and you're putting poison inside of you? And I even am going to stop with alcohol. They make vegan alcohol now. Because my friend did say, you know, I always talk about vegan. He's like, you drink uh, liquor, it's poison. And you know, I really have a comeback because you're absolutely right. But even though I'm drinking my liquor every once in a while when I go out with the girls, you're eating poison three times a day. So a ding, 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 I still won. But I did hear your point. If I'm going to stop something, I should stop. So they do make vegan. Um, and to be honest, my mom used to have grape juice growing up. And I swear, I used to love that grape juice. And it would sit in there too. Hmm. Hmm. But um, I, I took a long time doing this. I should have been, did this vegan podcast. I want to say one more thing before it's time to go. There's a book. That is called, um, oh, come on, I'm trying to get to the front.
because I don't have long. It's called Earthling ED, 30 Non-Vegan Excuses and Excuses and How to Respond to Them. So, um, the guy wrote an eat book and he just wanted to help people explain, you know, why they're vegan, this, that, the other. And he made some important facts. He was like, instead of asking questions, um, then giving answers could be some example of asking questions rather than giving answers could be, do you think animal cruelty is wrong rather than animal cruelty is wrong? Is there a humane way to kill an animal rather than there is no humane way to kill an animal? Why do you think a cow produces milk rather than a cow produces milk to feed their child? Do you think there's a difference between eating a dog and eating a pig rather than there is no difference between eating a dog or a pig? Um, he says, to give another example, I was recently taking part at an anonymous For the Voices event, an outreach event where graphic footage is screened to the public and a team of outreachers have conversations with people who stop and watch. And whilst watching the footage with the man, he said to me, do we know that animals suffer though? Instead of just saying, yes, of course, animals suffered, I prompt him to watch the screen, which was showing footage of cows being slaughtered. And I asked him, what do you think? Do the cows look like they are suffering to you? To which he replied, yes, they are clearly suffering. Now, I saw one of the slaughterhouse videos where a cow cried. Now, I don't know. They got us looking at all this other shit till I didn't even know the cows cried. Now, I didn't have a dog or cat grown up, so if they cry, you know, I didn't know that. I was just like, the cow is crying. When do we cry, y'all? Or we're happy or sad. I honestly don't think fucking cow was happy. Or maybe he was happy that his life was about to end and he could end the fucking torture. But either way, you look at that, whether it was happy or sad tears, it's fucking ridiculous. The only tears a cow should cry is having their baby. Okay? Um. And he just goes on to give other examples. I mean, this book is pretty long. It's 122 pages. And I don't know. My whole life just changed. I can't force anybody to understand how my life changed or, or how I feel the way I feel to make that change. It has to happen on your own time with your own walk. And maybe it's not even your walk. Because I've realized there is good and bad in the world. It's just, it's just always going to exist. And apparently I'm just on the good side. And I have come to terms with that. And if someone else needs to be on the bad side, then who am I to tilt the scale of evil and good in the universe because it definitely needs to be balanced so I just want to do my part with what I know one thing I'm not going to do is pretend I don't know something or I haven't learned something all this research I did with a master's degree is the same research that I'm doing with the things that I'm learning now and maybe that's where it started from maybe I learned the power of research and I was able to transpose that into my own personal life and that's what one of my co-workers said, um, who's battling cancer. She said, we didn't know. She was like, we only learn because, you know, we're in school with these degrees and we're researching. So we can use that in our regular life. And I was just like, dang. Because before school, I wasn't researching stuff. I was looking at TV, going out, da, da, da. Research was school. I got this paper to do. Oh, you know, they tell me how many pages, how many sources I have to have. So people were always going to talk about school, school. Follow your path because everything on your path is needed. It definitely is. I'm thankful for my degree. It was a personal goal of mine. I will gladly make every, um, not every, I will gladly make 120 payments and the rest will be written off. Um, or if someone blesses me with a check to write that off, since celebrities around here writing checks, be my guest. I think we just got a lot of work to do. We can't sit around here acting clueless anymore. These little babies is looking up to us, and we have a lot more tools and resources at our finger fingertips and our parents and grandparents, and we just cannot let them down. Like, game been over. It's go time. So hopefully, um, I'm not trying to talk down on anybody. Your journey is yours. Your choice is yours. I will never take that away from you, because you most definitely can't take mine from me. But... I've been going to the bathroom a lot more since my um, diet has changed. I used to have bad indigestions and gas all the time. That has changed. I even remember going to a gastrologist to ask her what was wrong. She said I had an overgrowth of bacteria. And I know I used to love cheese. I could eat a whole bag of cheese on my spaghetti by myself. Um, 
and she gave me some pills. I didn't want to be a fucking pill head. Then she didn't know what else to do. It was like, okay, let's take a microscope and go down your throat. Number one, you don't even know what's going on. Now you're just trying to experiment. I was like, no. And that's when I took, oh, and then she was like, instead of doing fried, do bake. And I used to work at Bank of America. Chick-fil-A was right down the street, so I would always go Chick-fil-A for lunch. So I switched from the grilled, oh, I do miss Chick-fil-A chick sandwiches. Oh, my God. But um, I know what happens to that animal, and that's what stops me. But, um... I switched from the fried to the grill, and it was still going on. So, obviously, I think it was the eggs. I think they dipped their chicken in eggs, too, though. But um, the doctor never really said, oh, be vegan. And they all know this. Like, that's what kills me. You are on my payroll to help me at fucking killing me. So, I'm going to switch to a holistic doctor who really wants to help me. And I know someone, Miss Sharita, I'd rather give her the money to help me live because you're helping me die. But I don't know. Whatever life or path you're supposed to walk, you will walk. But maybe this was for somebody. So I'm not a completely vegan. I'm vegan-ish. I do want to switch over to um, more holistic eating. More um, raw vegan. But like I love boiling me a potato or baking me a potato. So I don't know how that's going to go. So I think I'll stick with vegan-ish because I kind of pick and choose what works for me. But I definitely just want to get better and better every day. I think that's really what life is all about. Learning stuff and applying it the best way you can. Better and better and better with the more you know. The more you grow. The more you learn. Alright, that was tonight's episode. Love y'all. Bye. And this concludes today's conversation. Thanks a million for listening. You can reach me on other social media platforms at www.linktr period ee forward slash luv period meesh www.linktree forward slash love.niche. I hope you have a better than great day. Love you. Talk to you later. Bye.